Hi, I'm Dr. Diane Paul Heller, and I'm so happily here today with Dr. Terry Levy. We're going to be talking about attachment communication training, which is actually a specialty of Dr. Levy's. And just to give you a little idea to introduce ourselves, um, I have developed the DARE training that really focuses on attachment, especially clinically. How do we use what we know about attachment when we're in the hot seat, uh, being a therapist in our offices? And we also do provide a lot of online training programs uh, that really support this idea and expand it. And Terry, welcome. I'm so glad you're here. Uh, just checking in and let you introduce yourself, and then we'll dive into attachment communication training. Sounds good. Thank you, Diane. My pleasure to be here today. I am Dr. Terry Levy. I'm a licensed clinical psychologist and the director of the Evergreen Psychotherapy Center, the Attachment Treatment and Training Institute in beautiful Evergreen, Colorado, the Rocky Mountains. It is beautiful up here. And yes, we're going to be talking about attachment communication training, ACT. And it's a methodology that we've been using for many, many years with any dyad, could be adult couple, could be parent and child, could be siblings, could be any dyad that wants to learn communication, problem solving, and constructive conflict management skills. So we're going to talk about the rules, the guidelines, the skills of attachment communication training, how you work it, uh, work with it in your clinical practice with any dyad. Of course, uh, the focus is going to be a lot on couples in this particular webinar series. Uh, but we're also going to show some videos of parent children working on their communication and problem solving. So one of the basic ideas here is that in, for example, a couple relationship, adult romantic intimate relationship, that the problem is not really the problem that they say. We fight about this. We fight about that. We disagree about this. It's that they don't have the ability, the skills in order to repair the rupture, repair the argument, go from a negative to a positive space, which builds their confidence that they can deal with anything that comes up in their relationship. They can fix it. They can find solutions. They can get to the other side. They can repair it. So this ACT provides a, a vehicle for healthy and constructive conflict management. So we're going to be talking about uh, the ACT. We're going to be showing videos of dyads. And we're going to talk about the life script, the assessment tool from an attachment lens. And one of the things that we're also going to be including that I think is really valuable, and I know Terry's on the same page with this, is really looking at conflict, what sort of le leads into it, but also really looking at it through the lens of attachment. Like what happens when there's certain attachment injuries that might sort of be a little bit of a setup from our histories that perpetuate conflict in a way that doesn't really serve the relationship. So, for instance, in avoidant attachment, there's often a knee jerk reaction when things get tense or emotions get strong to withdraw and isolate and not really communicate at all or very little. Um, might be an intensity towards anger or just wanting to separate. And that can't really lead very effectively to resolution. So we want to really take a look at that. With the ambivalent style, very often there's sort of a feeling flooded by emotion and overwhelmed and then putting a lot of pressure on the other person to regulate us because we aren't so good at regulating ourselves when we're in that mode and then kind of abandoning ourselves. So even if the other person is saying and doing things that would lead to kind of a resolution, often we aren't in a place to receive it. So how do we build up our ability to take in uh, even a, an attempt to repair that we might initially reject? And then, of course, in disorganized attachment, it's even more complicated because you've got that in, entangling with threat and fear in the, in, in the original attachment blueprint. So you're working with a lot of dysregulation as well as sudden shifts of state and maybe disconnection or dissociation or flooding of emotions. So there's a really strong focus on how to create a safe space so people can communicate and actually be heard and feel received and feel that they have attunement in the relationship in order to calm that overactive, uh, high reactivity, uh, high level of um, dysregulation in the person's situation, especially when conflict presents itself. And then, of course, there's also the interplay, like what do different attachment styles bring out in 
each other when you like an avoidant is with an ambivalent or an ambivalent is with a disorganized. So there's a lot that we're really looking at to take a deep dive here on how to really understand conflict resolution through this lens. Absolutely. And we call one of the goals changing the dance of the relationship. The dance meaning the pattern, the routine, the dynamic. And of course, as as Diane, you're suggesting, and it's so true, you know, attachment affects people from, as Bowlby said, the cradle to the grave. So without self-awareness and intentionality to make change, uh, we bring our old attachment lens and styles into our adult relationships. And it's like the same old, same old, same old routines we can't get out of. So the attachment communication technique allows us to change the dance. So really, we're, the goal is to create secure attachment in that relationship, which involves things like empathy, compassion, safety, security, attunement, co-regulation, really the ability to go from the old negative conflictual relationship that we learned perhaps growing up negative attachment experiences, insecure attachment experiences to a very positive, affirming and validating and supportive and really loving and accepting and, and a healthy, positive relationship as we're adults. So these are very specific techniques and guidelines we use in the ACT because without the guidelines, then people are going to do what they always do, their old habits, their old patterns, the old dance. So these new, um, these new skills allow people to make changes. So, for example, what do, what do I mean by new skills? There's sharing skills and there's listening skills. And we contract Let's say we're talking about an adult couple. We contract. We make agreements with them. Are you willing to try these new skills? It may feel a little artificial at first. That's okay. We'll get there over time. It'll feel better over time because it is a change. When you're sharing, make I statements. Talk about yourself. Don't threaten and accuse your partner. That's not going to end up very well because when you threaten and accuse somebody, they get defensive and angry. So we talk about sharing with I statements. I think. I feel. We talk about head and heart. I'm thinking this. I'm feeling this. Because a lot of people talk about the head, the left hemisphere, the intellect. But they forget the heart, the soul, the emotional world that they're living in. So head and heart. We talk about getting to the point and being brief. Don't hog the conversation. You know, make it very succinct and give examples. We talk about being aware of your body language as a sharer. Because the body, we know body language is about 80, 70 to 80% of human communication. The look on your face, the tone of your voice, the way you're holding yourself in space. Do you look safe? Do you look threatening? Do you look stressed out and angry? Do you look calm and you can absorb and take in the other person's message? So, you know, those are the sharing skills. The listening skills, we call, we call it non-judgmental and uh, accepting communication as a listener. You're not judging the other person, okay? You're taking in their messages so that person can know you're hearing what they are saying because you're going to feel much more safe and secure if you feel like your partner understands you, has compassion for you, and is listening to you as opposed to arguing or debating or getting defensive. So the point is, these are very specific personal and interpersonal skills and behaviors that people learn to change their dynamics. And actually, it can change attachment styles to go from anxious to secure, from avoidant to secure, from negative to positive, to threatening to safe. And we're going to show you videos of this as well. One of the things I wanted to mention too, Terry, that I've seen in your videos that's so powerful is you as the therapist, of course, are presencing secure attachment. You're modeling how to interact as you're interacting with the couple or the individual or whoever you're working with. And then you're also teaching those same skills to the couples to be able to use effectively and then kindly interrupting them if they get off track and uh, safely bringing them back to a way that would be more effective for them to resolve conflict. Right. 
And before we actually do the ACT, communication training with the dyad, the couple, um, we do the life script with them. So we know specifically what they're bringing to the table from their family of origin, their trauma history, their attachment style they learned growing up in their families. Were they secure? Were they avoidant? Were they anxious? Were they traumatized? Were they hurt? And are they frightened? And are they in that amygdala, that fear center of their limbic brain, where they're expecting abandonment and betrayal and rejecting. So they're already getting defensive and ready for the fight before it even happened. So we, it's very important before you do the training of the communication that you understand their background. And this life script is 17 questions that are designed to very deeply, specifically learn what they bring to the table from their past. I think a mistake a lot of clinicians uh, do is that they go into the communication training without thoroughly understanding the prior trauma and attachment history. So they're kind of like driving in the fog. They can't see where they're going. You have to understand what they bring to the table. Then you have to have a mechanism to help them change it. So it's the life script and the change mechanism of the ACT communication technique. One of, one of my colleagues, Bonnie Badenock, she talks about obligatory projection, that we can't avoid projecting our history onto our present. And that's why it's so important to do the healing that's needed underneath what is causing our reactivity and causing our knee-jerk reactions that can keep perpetuating repetitive patterns. And I think there's an argument in in psychology and psychotherapy. Some people say, well, you have to dig deep and focus on the past and bring up all the traumas. Other people say, no, you focus on the present and you give them the resources and skills and abilities. The truth is, it's both. Mm -hmm. The life script helps us understand the past and what they bring to the table, mind, body, spirit, and emotion, their lens, their perception, their, their core beliefs, their narrative. And the attachment communication helps them change it today and practice it tomorrow. So it's a combination of left hemisphere, right hemisphere, intellect, emotion, past, present, future. It's really very holistic and integrative. It's been a delight to have you with us. And in our next video, we're going to be talking about attachment communication training in terms of personal growth and healing that is so rich and deep. You're going to love this. 